thank you for joining us on Turning Point International. He's regarded as uh, one of the greatest cricket men to ever walk the earth. And also, he's a hero here in Antigua and Barbuda, known as the Master Blaster. Sir Vivian Richard joins us on the show. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you, too. It's a bittersweet moment for me, I have to confess. Uh, sweet because I'm sitting with a, with a sporting legend. Bitter because I'm sitting next to a man who, who single-handedly made me get in trouble at school. Let us stick with the sweet. <laughs> Let us stick with the sweet. <laughs> you, you, you know, you, you are regarded easily as one of, not just in cricket, but in terms of sports, one of the greatest sportsmen ever to live. Uh, your championships that you've won, and then some of your, your own, uh, some of the things you do and the way you conduct yourself is used in other sports as, as a type of how you should be as a captain. What for you were your earliest memories of walking into a space where you knew, yeah, I'm the boss in this space? Well, not, not being the boss, but I can remember when I, I first um, played here in Antigua and uh, one of my great uh, or greatest ambitions was, was to become a professional sportsman. And um, I felt more than anything else, maybe with the inspiration force that we would have had, the Garfield Sorbers, the Wes Halls, and Sir Everton Weeks. And these are individuals, when you were a little boy, that you would admire. And you would certainly wanted to follow in their footsteps. And this is the sort of stuff which I think the energy that they brought to, to me as a, a young individual. And I just wanted to represent um, my country, uh, uh, the country which I was born. There's always a step before you can reach that particular height right. that you think you, you, you can attain. But at the end of the day, um, just growing up as an Antiguan and Barbudan and the, the local folks itself and what they wanted to achieve, even before I started to maybe look at uh, the great West Indian players of the past, but there were certainly individuals before you got a chance to see them. But was, was there ever any danger that you would have gone down the academic route? Because you, you won I tried scholarship. It, I tried it, I tried it. <laughs> <laughs> I now, tried it, I tried it. Just for the record, you won scholarship to one of the, one, one of the best schools in the country. Antigua Grammar School. Yeah, the, it was the Antigua Grammar School. The Antigua School. Grammar School. Yeah. So, so you, you know, you could, have, you could have done academia if you wanted. Well, I, I wanted to, but at the end of the day, you have schools these days which do cater for sportsmen and women. Right. And uh, it gives you an opportunity to, for you to get an academic uh, or an academic sort of uh, foundation. And when you can do that, then certainly you can venture into anything else. Mm -hmm. But um, I was happy those days to be involved in the sport which I loved, mm -hmm. a sport which uh, I guess because of that inspirational force, my father, all, all the great individuals you know, who would have represented the West Indies, that, um, wow, here's a great opportunity, you know, because that's what we had then. You know, in the region, you know, we, we never had anything that was hugely enough international that I wanted to be like. But the folks who you grew up around, those were the inspirational force. And as you got further afield, then you started to, to hear about the other great sports people of the world. Yeah. Then you started to take them on board. Now, there's, there's something of a turning point for you where you're playing here, uh, and uh, uh, I believe it's, is it Lee Creed from Somerset? I think it was the Mendevacons. And uh, I think it was then, at the time, uh, vice chairman of the Somerset County Cricket Club. Who, who spots you. And you got the name right, Mr. Len Creed. He was Len man, Creed, he was Len Creed. And he spots you playing, sees great talent, and then extracts you, takes you back to the UK. Now, when you get to England, uh, how, how quickly did you experience in the other side of the world happen to you? Because for, for black people, uh, there is, of course, the, there's a good part, there's a not so good part. Uh, there's a part where you're, you're walking and someone's making monkey noises and throwing things at you. How, how quickly did that happen for you? Well, you, you do have your, um, your ups and downs and regardless of wherever you go in the world, uh, I've always felt that, and up to this day, at, at 65, I'm still very much a proud individual. You're not 65, sir. Yes, you look, I am. You're I'm, not 65. I'm very much um, in, in the 60s. I'm, I'm, just about near pension or could I just be above that pension, uh, pension limit? <laughs> but at the end of the day, 
You know, it, it's um, about having belief in your oneself. Um, I, I did not look at any particular color and felt that that color was uh, an inferior color to I am, or I was of any inferior color to any other color. I just felt we are human beings. And I just took the simple route out. The simple route I took in terms of the things that make us all human beings. We bleed, we die, we, um, regardless of whatever creed, color, or race you may be, be, be of. But that's the end of the day, and this is how I, I've basically looked at it. It's very simple that um, at the end of the day, we're going to have so many de different denominations. And I was a proud individual. I, 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 I'm not going to ask anyone to, 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 to maybe behave the same way that, that I did, but I was pretty proud, and I walk in anywhere, else, regardless of wherever I am. I may be outnumbered, but that's the style I had, and I have no regret for it because I was pretty proud of my race, pretty proud of my color, I'm pretty proud of the things that um, I did achieve. So I, I had no, no hiccups with that particular matter. Well, we get to see a yeah. glimpse of, of why you were such a bone crusher on the cricket field. But you mentioned belief, and I want to explore some more of that in a moment. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to say thank you. Please stay with us because there's much more we could talk about. Uh, with me on Turning Point International is the great cricket legend, Sir Viv Richard. There's more for you after this.